Okay, in this tutorial what I'd like to do is to show you how to threshold and segment in Slicer. There are not a lot of tutorials on YouTube and there are little bits of information that are quite important to, to get this job done. Okay, before beginning um, you need to decide how you want these windows displayed. This window here uh, is the 3D window and here are three orthogonal slice windows. There's a layout option in the view menu which allows you to try different types of viewing uh, triple 3D, three different types of 3D but I'm going to go with conventional uh, to, to begin with. You can choose whatever you like. Okay, first of all let's get some data in. This normally, this software is looking for DICOM data but it can take in microscopy data. Let's add this data. I'm going to choose a file to add and one I have prepared earlier. There you go. Okay, this is a set of cancer cells. Alien cap cancer cells. Uh, this, this single file has a collection of images, a Z series, and I want to load this as one single file. Okay, so here my data pops up in the orthogonal view windows and I can use these slicers, these sliders, sorry to view the data. This is the axial plane and if I look at a little pin here you'll see this is the axial plane on the pin. This is sagittal with the pin. This is the coronal. You see these these eyes that are closed means that this window is not visible in the 3D window so let's open the eyes and just change the view by using the left mouse. If I use the middle button or the scroll wheel I can use the press on the scroll wheel to move left, uh, left and right and zoom. So let's just position that and if I move the orthogonal slice you'll see here. Well, I can add the other ones in. Here's our sagittal view which you'll see from here. If I scroll that, okay. And let's add in this one which is around here. Okay, let's maybe take this one off to make that a bit clearer. Okay, so you can have these visible or not in the 3D window as you choose. I'm going to take them all off for now because we're going to build a 3D model, 3D volume, sorry, and then make a segmentation. So up in this window here we have all of the modules and there are lots as you can see. But what we want to do to begin with is a volume rendering. So I'm going to select my volume here and this is the data set and I'll open the little eye and my data set appears here. Nice. Under the display you'll see there are lots of presets. Now these presets work particularly well for medical data, like MRI, CT and so on. But some of them are okay for this type of cellular data. And just try them, try a few of them, find one you like. Oh that's useless, it's not too bad. Well, that's quite nice. But I quite like that one. Okay. So I've got my 3D volume. Now I want to make a segmentation of these cells. And you can see that there's bright areas inside the cells. These would be the nuclei, the nucleus of each cell, surrounded by the cell itself. And I'll do two segmentations, one which is all of the cell and another one which is the brighter objects, which is the nuclei. Okay, so to make a segmentation, I need to go to the segment editor, which is here. I've got my data set collect selected and I want to add a new segment. So I press the add button. Now segment one is not very descriptive so let's call that cells. And just for the sake of showing you that I can change the color, let's double click on that and change the color to something, let's go for a nice yellow, nice bright yellow. Okay and I'll select that. Alright now down in this effects panel here there are a whole different host of ways in which you can threshold and select particular parts of the, the data 
I'm going to use the threshold option for now and I may come back in later videos and look at these things. Let's go for threshold. Okay. Now, you can see that it has, I'm just going to scroll down, it has automatically selected between 64 and 253, which is quite good. Good guess. It might, when you open it, you might find something like this, where the entire data set is selected. Or worse still, when only the very low level of data intensities are selected, like here, for instance, from 2 to 50, and this selects all of the background. We don't want the background, we want the stuff which is not the background. So select all of the data, and bring the background up until we get really the very brightest stuff, or maybe just the cells. Well, we can check and see if that looks all right there. Not too bad there. Okay, that looks probably okay. Right. So if I was happy with that, I would choose apply. And that has created a segment, which I should be able to see in my window here, but it doesn't show up because often I forget that you have to click here, show 3D. When I show 3D, hopefully, my segment should appear. There it is. And actually what I've got here now is the segment and the volume. I'm tempted, I think I'll switch the volume off so that all we've got is the segment. So I'll go back to my volumes, oh sorry, volume rendering, and we'll switch the volume rendering off. Right, okay, now we've only got that segment. Go back to my segment editor. I want to make another segment, which is the stuff which is inside, you know, the very bright, very bright nuclei which are inside here. And those would be the highest intensity objects. So let's add a new segment. Let's make them a different color, make them a nice kind of magenta -y, pinky, purple type of color. Something like that. Okay, so like that. It's all good. Call it nuclei. And let's threshold that. Done not a bad job. We've got to scroll down to find where we are. Okay, it's going from 99 to 253, but I probably want the high, the very highest intensities. Let's say it was there. How's that look? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, okay. I'll go with that. Apply that. Wait. This is a little bit slow because this version of 3D Slicer is running from a server uh, that our students use uh, rather than running directly off of my hard drive. Uh, should that should be uh, visible, you can just about see in this one here, yeah, there's, a, there's another segment in there of a different colour, but what would be easier, it would make it easier to see it would be that if the yellow surface was a bit more transparent. So let me go to our segmentations. And here's my segmentation. I've got my cells and my nuclei. And I want to make them just a little bit more transparent. There we go. So I've got my two segments. And I would probably want to now export them as a .obj file, which is in a wireframe format, a mesh, a surface, uh, surface uh, rendering, which can then be manipulated in animation software or mesh reduction software like MeshLab or whatever you would choose to use. I'll go back to my segments, segment editor, and this is what you want here. This is the export button for segmentations but, rather strangely, it's this little drop-down you need to use. Export to files. And this here is a little bug. If you press on that button, uh, it's very difficult to, f to, um, to navigate to the folder you want to 
save the files to. You can navigate there, but there's no selection option. I'm going to choose .obj. I might choose .stl if I wanted to 3D print this file, which would be the stereolithographic file format. But I would use this or the this wireframe for a, an animation, so I'll use this .obj. I will try to find. Well, let's just say I was going to put it in in a core cell folder. Choose that folder. Choose export. And it should export as a .obj. And it's here. Segmentation.obj, 11th of October, 1442. Yep, that's the that's the file that I would then take off to Maya or any mesh manipulation software, sculpting software that you choose to use. Okay, hope that was helpful.